It was once a vibrant part of the local economy. But now the Bristol Mall stands vacant. Music echoing through empty halls, but nobody listening. Outside, the parking lot is cracked and filled with more weeds than customers. You're looking at 49 acres of sadness and failure. But a couple of area businessmen have an idea to bring this old mall property back to life. You might say they're betting on Bristol. I was having uh, lunch with Clyde Stacy one day at the old farm. He had the idea of a casino, and that's something we never, ever thought about. But instantly, I saw the real opportunity to have a business that would make sense and to take Bristol from where it is today to a big-time success. Jim McLaughlin, a man who made his fortune in the coal industry, is the chairman and CEO of the United Company. He thinks the casino resort is the perfect solution to Southwest Virginia's economic downturn, and he's willing to finance the entire project to prove it. The reason we can do this quickly is we're not asking for state or federal funding, so we're going to put our own money, uh, money that we've accumulated over a lifetime. A report prepared by a Richmond consulting firm projects that by the year 2027, the resort would employ 5,200 workers and host 4 million guests per year contributing $69.5 million in tax revenue. And a big chunk of that, over $26 million, would go to Bristol, Virginia. It would save the state of Virginia over $48 million due to the reduction of payments for unemployment insurance, food stamps, and family assistance. If you want an instant shot that somewhere down the road takes the city out of debt, gives all these thousands of jobs, not only to this city, but to Washington County, to Abingdon, to the coal fields who will come in here to work. This is the only thing that I can think of that does that pretty quickly. There is one huge hurdle. Virginia does not allow casino gambling. The project will only proceed if the existing law is changed. And that is a big if. So would you be happy if we just even had a referendum to vote for it? I think that's what's going to happen. And that's what should happen. And I think the argument of the General Assembly is very simple. Let Bristol be in charge of its own destiny. Don't keep sending us money. Let us have money to send back to you. If the law is changed, the project will be completed in two phases. In phase one, the old J.C. Penney store will be converted into a two-floor casino. Gaming tables and slot machines on the top floor, a sports betting section on the lower floor. A 10- to 20-story hotel will be built at the rear of the property, with restaurants and shops filling up the center. The old Sears property would become a children's area, separated from the casino, with games, activities, even free daycare for the employees. Phase 2 adds a conference center where the former Belk store once stood and plans to convert the movie theaters into a music venue. Have you come up with a name for this? So I want to call it Moon Valley. <laughs> Moon Valley. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're wanting to put a roller coaster all the way around the mall and call it Moon Valley. Yes. Wouldn't that be fun for, for the kids? <laughs> Last night, I sat down for an interview with the driving force behind the proposed Bristol Resort and Casino, Jim McLaughlin. Now, tonight, we're going to hear the flip side. We're going to talk to those that are against the project, and they say it's a moral issue. The plan to revamp the Bristol Mall into a resort and casino promises many things. More jobs, higher pay, family atmosphere. But a group of local religious leaders still says no thanks. Reverend Dewey Williams is the pastor of Bell Meadows Baptist Church in Bristol, Virginia. Williams is a self-described old-school Baptist who believes in the Word of God, and he is not about to trade that for all the promises in the world. This is not something that, that I want my people to be a part of. I don't want them working in this. Uh, I, I don't want my church members working gaming tables and serving drinks to people. I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't want my children doing this. I wouldn't want my grandchildren. It would break my heart. My heart's broken over this. Williams is upset with city council. He feels they pushed through the development at the falls, and now they're doing the same thing with the casino. One of the arguments that were given at the council meeting was that uh, we already have gambling here. We already have the lotto. This is going to bring people together in Bristol in the church world who've never been together. Do you think the people that are bringing this idea forward are bad people? I'm not saying that. I just don't think that they, I don't think the city council that voted for this, I don't think they did what the people wanted to do. William says everyone needs to forget about the dollars and cents. This is a moral issue, 
and his guidance comes from the good book. Because the Bible says, woe to the man that puts the bottle to his neighbor's lip. And there's a principle there that if you, if you offer something to someone and you're going to make money from that, and it's not wrong, it's, it's, it's not moral, and it affects that person and hurts that person, then God's going to see them about that. Reverend Williams has a dire warning for those that welcome the casino. If this comes in, we really will have to take our sign down in Bristol because it won't be a good place to live. Now you've heard both sides of the argument and you can decide.